the final call for Deputy Zachary Parrish, badge number 1721. You are my once in a lifetime. You are my hero and my best friend. You gave me a life of adventure and love. I can hear Zach calling me now, telling me that he misses my face. People would tease me about my bromance with Zach. Deputy Zachary Parrish, may you rest in peace knowing that your strength lives on in your wife, your legacy will be carried on through your daughters, and that your honor will continue on with all of us. And, and truly beautiful moments today as family, friends, and fellow police officers lay their husband, son, and brother in arms to rest. Good evening. I'm Ann Trujillo. I'm Teresa Marchetta. Douglas County Sheriff's Deputy Zach Parrish was killed in an ambush early New Year's Eve. His widow, Gracie, through her tears, spoke with sorrow and courage. This is a letter that I never thought I'd write. It is one filled with grief and sorrow, pain and heartache but it is also filled with pride and joy. As soon as he was sworn in, his blood turned blue. So in turn, mine did too. And Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski is here in the studio with us. And Jen, that was just an incredibly beautiful tribute. It really was, and it was amazing to see the amount of people who came out for this. Now, thousands packed Cherry Hills Church and Highlands Ranch to pay their respect to Deputy Parrish. He was just 29 years old. But in that short time, you could tell he touched a lot of lives. As a chief, people often ask me, what keeps you up at night? And what keeps me up at night is the phone call that I received Sunday morning. New Year's Eve is when the call came in. I've never had to bury a fellow officer under my command. I never had to feel that hole in my heart. As you look around, Grace, you see that that world changed not only for every person in this room, but for every person, law enforcement across this country. A day law enforcement and Deputy Zach Parrish's family will never forget. It's sad that Zach is gone, but it's up to us to remember him and to be like him. This day was not about sadness, but a day of celebration of a life that touched them all. He loved baseball. He loved his family. And we loved him. A banker turned deputy who answered the call to serve. I know this for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Zach will forever watch over us and give us the strength as law enforcement officers to serve our communities every single day. It ended with a 21 bell salute. Babe, you were an amazing father and loved your girls so well. I promise to raise our girls with the Lord as my focus. I promise to raise them in a home that bleeds blue. It ended with a final call on the radio. 1721, you are clear for end of watch. Deputy Parrish's father shared some really great stories about his son's life. One of them, our Denver 7's Megan Lopez, shared with all of you earlier this week, a young mom who wanted us to let you know how Zach Parrish changed her life. I'll let them share the story. Once he became a policeman, he was like a new man. He was in his element. He was called to serve. He was called to serve. He loved his job. My daughter was eight months old. It was her first night away from me. And I thought, yay, I can be an adult. He called me and said, Dad, you won't believe what just happened. I pulled a woman over that she's a DUI. I had to arrest her. She got an 18-month-old child. Deputy Parrish actually made contact with me November 14th at 4 o'clock in the morning. I had been uh, drinking and driving. I was going down a really bad path. He says, we need to pray for her. We need to pray for her. Very calm. Just his voice. I was so scared when he pulled me over, and I just remember him saying, good people make mistakes. You're not a bad person. He talked to me 
so calm. I felt like God put him in my life for a reason. Then about a year ago, I was driving uh, in Castle Rock and I was getting on the highway and it was a blizzard outside. And this cop comes flying up on me on, on, on the off ramp and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? And he comes up to the car and he's like, the reason I pulled you over is because you have no taillights. As he turned with my ID, I saw his, his badge and I was like, oh my gosh, now's my opportunity to say thank you. And he would get all animated. Dad, I can't, I, I, I can't believe what happened. Pull her over. Tell light was broke this time. She's not drinking anymore. I also want to tell people my story and tell everybody about how he treated me because there's so many crazy things that happen and officers deal with a lot. And I want them to see that there's not all bad cops. They, they really do care about their community and the people that they live, live around. Beautiful story. And there were some lighter moments today, including this one from his wife, Gracie. I promise that I will not teach them to drive when they turn 16 and instead get your brothers in blue to do the job. <laughs> Talking about those precious two little girls. Yeah. Now thousands of police vehicles escorted Gracie Parish and her family to Cherry Hills Community Church. And of course they weren't alone because hundreds of you were there lining the streets to salute, to show the family your respects as that hearse carrying Deputy Parish's casket passed by. Number seven's Thomas Hoppe was along that route in Lone Tree. Thomas? There were hundreds of people on this route on Lincoln, but along with those people, there were a hundred of these blue ribbons tied onto lamps, trees, and posts to show respect for Deputy Parrish. And everybody standing next to one of these, they didn't stop and they didn't leave until that last car drove by. It's hard to see somebody have lost their loved one in the way that it happened. Well, Don is beautiful this morning. It is what he did. It's heartbreaking. His little girls and this is so great for them to see, but their daddy and their her husband's gone. Because of the hero they lost. Unfortunately, it takes an event like this for people to really come out and show their support. A man they'll never get to meet. He gave his ultimate sacrifice, and he is a hero. Flags in hand, hands on hearts, and tears upon cheeks for the man who fell serving on that thin blue line. Family, that's exactly what it is, is family. And to lose one um, is hard. All of them standing still for the man that moved them all. Thank you for your service. In Douglas County. Every morning when they leave. Thomas Hoppo. Kiss their kids goodbye. They don't know what's, what's in store. Number seven. You know, there were so many touching moments today. If you missed the funeral, you still want to watch, we have the entire service up on our Facebook page. Just search for Denver 7.